Hey coders and welcome to episode one of our JDBC service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In today's episode, we're going to be covering how to connect our Apps Script project to Cloud SQL. So the beauty behind JDBC is that you can use it to connect to any JDBC compliant database, which is basically all of the relational databases located anywhere around the world. Now for this video, we're going to be using Google Cloud's very own Cloud SQL as our backend database, just because I am such a Google fanboy. But if you have a database, a relational database located elsewhere, you can still use the JDBC service to connect to it. And the process is very similar to what we are about to see in this episode. Now, if there's enough demand, I'll make a follow-up video on how to do that. But again, the process is going to be very similar to what you were about to see in this episode. So without any further ado, let's jump on over to the live demonstration and learn how to connect to Cloud SQL using this method, Git Cloud SQL Connection. In order to start utilizing the methods from the JDB service, we're going to need to have a database we can connect our code to. So let's do that right now. We will both create and host our database on the Google Cloud platform. Now, this isn't going to be a Google Cloud tutorial. We do have a lot of playlists on this channel that detail how to create a Google Cloud account, as well as access many of the great services that it provides. But for this video, we're just going to be very brief with creating our database. So to do that, we're going to access Cloud SQL, which can be found in the sidebar menu, or you can just search for it in this search bar up top right here. Either way, you're going to be redirected to this page right here, which will prompt you to create a new uh, SQL instance. Now an instance is basically just a server that runs and hosts your database. So we'll do that right now. And that's going to ask us to choose our database engine. We'll use uh, MySQL right here. And then it's going to ask us to now configure our instance. Again, we're just going to be very straight to the point with creating this instance. And then when we create our mice or when we create our Cloud SQL tutorial playlist, then we'll describe what all of these different configurations mean. But let's just do this very quickly. All right, it's going to ask us for an instance ID. We'll just pick something simple, such as App Script. And then it's going to ask us for a password. Now, technically, we don't need to have a password, but I would strongly suggest that you do, just so that your database is a bit more secure. All right, so we can either generate a password, or I'm just going to keep this very simple and say uh, test1234. Now, you'll definitely want to write this down somewhere, so let me go back into my App Script editor and say const password equals this right here, test1234. And then it says that this password is going to be for the root user. Now you can add more users for your MySQL instance, but I'm just going to be using the root user for now. So let me say username is root. So username is root and password is test1234, great. So let's go down, we can select a uh, database version. Again, we're just going to be very straight to the point for this. Uh, I I'm also going to um, I'm also going to customize just a little bit. I'm going to say just for the sake of pricing, I'm going to say a lightweight and then storage. I'm going to say uh, 10 gigabytes. That sounds good. And then I am going to say single zone actually and then create it. That looks pretty good. Again, it's a pretty small instance, but we don't want to create uh, an instance that runs for a little bit and then charges lots of money. So we're just going to create this right now and it's going to actually take some time to create. So let me just speed up the video right now. Okay, so that took around three to four minutes, maybe a little bit more if you have a more complex instance, but that should be about the time that you need to create a, a new instance. So now let's try to actually connect with it. So if we go back into our app script editor, let's say const connection 
equals, and then we'll need to access our parent class, JDBC, and then we're going to use this method right here, get cloud SQL connection. Now this method only works if you are accessing a cloud SQL database. If you have your database not hosted on Google Cloud SQL, then you'll need to use this method right here, get connection. The, the arguments are basically the same. There's a little bit more configuration you'll have to do, but they're basically the same. But we have our Cloud SQL instance set up, so let's try to connect with that. All right, so there are three different options. We can either just give it the URL, you can give it some additional info, or if it requires a username and password, then we need to give it that as well. So let's use this right here. We have three different uh, arguments that we need to give it. We need to give it the URL, the username, and the password. All right, so the URL. So let's say const URL equals, so what is our, our, uh, our database URL? Well, if we go into the documentation, we can see that the, the URL right here is has the form of JDBC colon Google colon MySQL colon and then the subname. And it says the subname is the MySQL instance connection name. Now, where do we find that? Well, if we go back into our uh, dashboard right here, and let me dismiss that, then we can see the connection name is listed right here. So if we copy that, actually, let me first get this protocol right here. I'll copy that and paste it right there. And then we're going to get our connection name and paste that right after our protocol. All right, so that should be our URL. So all we need to do is just fill in these right here. That's going to be our username. And then the password is going to be test1234, exactly what we just uh, provided. And now let's see if we get a connection. So we're going to say logger log and log that connection. And now if we save it and we run it, and there we go. So it, set, it has recorded our JDBC connection. The connection has been made. There's no errors. So that means now we have set everything up properly and successfully. Now there's one more thing that I want to uh, mention, and that is closing the connection. So if we go back into our documentation and go all the way down to closing connections, it says that JDB connect, JDBC connections close automatically when a script finish, finishes executing. So that's good. But nonetheless, when if you know you're done with a the connection, then it's a good idea to close it manually. So we're just going to follow this advice right here, recommendation, and say connection. At the end of our script, say connection dot close and that's always good uh, that's a good thing to do best practices and if we save it and run it again then we should get the uh, connection and it should close because we are manually closing it right here all right guys that's going to be the end of this video i hope you guys made the connection as we did in this tutorial if you learned something and if you liked it then don't forget to hit that like button and also the subscribe button it really means a lot to me but I'll see you in the very next episode when we start actually appending and querying data to our database.